Hi, history buffs. Today we're talking about the Italian Renaissance. And first, I want to disagree with John Green here. There was, in fact, an Italian Renaissance. Art changed. Architecture changed. The fact that only a very small amount of people paid for it and did it doesn't really matter because there is an awful lot of trickling down. I mean, just imagine the Duomo in Florence or St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. These are Renaissance structures that dominate the skyline, and they allow anybody to experience the Renaissance. They could walk in off the street. You can still walk in off the street today in Rome into any number of these grand Renaissance churches and experience the Renaissance for yourself. And while they weren't reading the humanist tracts that people like Machiavelli were uh, writing, that doesn't mean that the Renaissance didn't appeal to them. And as I've mentioned in earlier modules, particularly Module 13, there were actually a lot of engagement between the regular people and institutions like the church who were very integral to the Renaissance. But I actually agree that the Italian Renaissance isn't so much of a big deal for a totally different reason. Europe, and of course Byzantine Empire, and of course the Islamic world, were constantly using ancient works and innovating ancient techniques throughout the entire period that we've been talking about. So just to take Europe for example, in the 6th century Irish monks were already copying the Bible and Christian authors and their copies were spread throughout Western Europe revitalizing monastery copying work. In the 8th and 9th century Charlemagne was using the funds of France and the Holy Roman Empire to pay for monks to be copying pagan authors and Christian authors in order to maintain education in Latin and to popularize the Bible again throughout different parishes. In the 11th and 12th centuries we see another renaissance of monks becoming more engaged in their faith and using Greek philosophy, particularly Aristotelian philosophy which they borrow from Muslim communities in southern Europe like Spain and Sicily, to investigate their faith and to come up with new theology. And in the next few centuries we see a lot of theological debates turning on Greek philosophy. So already we have huge centuries-long tradition of using philosophy and other Greek sciences and Roman techniques to investigate Christianity. What the Italian Renaissance was able to do was to bring this thought into a wider world and that really starts with Dante, whom some of you will be reading for this module. He wrote in vernacular Italian, which allowed a whole new audience to appreciate his work. Dante is followed by all sorts of authors who choose to write in their own languages instead of in scholarly Latin. They didn't need church educating to read them, and that's what allowed the Italian Renaissance to flourish in ways that early Renaissances hadn't. Keep that in mind as you're doing your readings for this week, and I'll see you in discussion.